corrective steering applied. What's it gonna do? All right, welcome back to another video. I have Paige in the car today. Hello. We're going down to the shops and I thought this would be a good opportunity to show you some of the interesting maneuvers that Autopilot does and give you an understanding on like some of the decisions it makes and how it works. We have the full setup with the big camera. We've got the GoPro here. So it's all a full production on Ryan's Model 3. Soon to be Ryan's Model Y, as we're going past some bikes here. And let's just see. Oops, sorry. That's I okay. Disengaged. Often safer to disengage autopilot in these situations. Cruise is still on. Yeah. Oh, it's automatically braking. If I to head Do you want to just take over? So that gives you an example of a whole pack of bikes. Autopilot does a really good job with bikes now, but if they're coming out onto the road, it is gonna apply the brakes pretty heavily. So we find in most cases, it's better to just disengage autopilot. So currently this is on Paige's setup. So it's got the distance between the car in front set to her preference, which is, what have you got it on? Um, I got it on, oh no, I had it on two, that's unusual. Normally I have it on three. Yeah, so it feels like you know, for me, that's possibly a little bit too close, but yeah. I think I normally have mine set to four. And then if we go into the settings under autopilot, we can see that Paige has turned off lane departure avoidance. That's something that I have on assist. She's not a fan. Um, green traffic light chime is that new software update we just got. So we've just switched that on for her. And now every time we're at a set of traffic lights, we'll get a nice little chime to know that the light has changed green. Yeah, the lane assist is just going to pull you back in to the lane if you veer off. So it is a little bit freaky, but uh, it's there for safety. So So do you think I should keep it on? I think the, the area where it feels unsafe to have it on is when you're going on the Hume and you're overtaking a truck and you mm. veer off the highway deliberately just a little bit to give yourself more room and it pulls you back in towards the truck that can be a scary feeling but uh and the warning sounds are quite intense yeah the warning sounds are pretty full on but yeah each to their own i do think it is a safer option to have on all right so we're getting to a very interesting fork in the road that autopilot seems to do something different every time and it typically wants to go in the same direction that the car in front is going. So we'll see here, um, it's gonna divide the road into two lanes and you can also check out what's going on in the screen. The car is gonna make a decision as to whether it wants to go in the left lane or the right lane. And this is just standard autopilot. There's no bells and whistles. So here we are, we're coming to the fork in the road and it's gonna choose Ah, it's going to the right. There you go. Perfect example. If that white car wasn't in front of us, uh, it probably would have gone to the left. Yeah. And now it's automatically slowing. We've seen that there's a 50 kilometer speed change. Down changes here. No. And it should automatically change this. Okay, so it hasn't changed the speed for you. So no, you it, have hasn't, to... it hasn't been doing it for me lately. You can see the graphics have been updated now. So they're a lot more punchy. Oh, here we go. Message from Tesla. Your final invoice is now ready. Oh my gosh, look at the timing when we're in the car. There we go, so Model Y invoice has just come through. Ooh, and how long do we have to pay that? I don't want to look. <laughs> <laughs> we've still got to sell this one first. Yeah, we're going to sell this. So this truck is, you know, edging its way towards our lane a little bit, but you'll notice that autopilot will often just correct itself if it comes too close. He's not really concentrating. No. Which is Sometimes I just veer off because I get too scared. If you're ever in Rye, definitely check out Go Vita Health Food Shop. It's a good health food store. It's our favourite go to. What would be the feature you're most excited about for the Y? Hmm. Or anything about the car in particular? I like that it's higher up, the Y. I'm excited for the boot. I think that's gonna be amazing. Yeah. Having it up like a lot higher, we can fit a lot more in. Mm. What about you? What are you excited about? Yeah, I'm just excited to be higher up. 
and to have that hatchback sort of style, which would be so much easier when we're going to Beechworth and stuff. Yeah, it'd be a lot easier with the dogs. Yeah. And something that I'm excited about is just getting in and out of the car with a lot more ease. Yeah. Like right now, you've really got to like work those hips. Yeah, yeah, you do. <laughs> and you know, if you're a little bit older or pregnant, I reckon it would be really challenging, whereas the wire just makes it a lot easier. Yep. Let's see if we get the green traffic light chime. Oh, it's a green arrow. I don't know if that's going to work. I've never heard the chime Is this before. car going left? No, nah, they're in the left arrow lane though, because this lane is just the left. Yeah. Is that a chime? No. Nah. Oh. <laughs> Alright, we'll see if we get the green traffic light chime on this go. And this car in front will go, and then it will chime. Yep, there we go. There's the chime. Apologise to the car behind, because they're like, how come he's not moving? Alright, so we've got another change from two lanes into one lane. Let's see what autopilot does. Nice and smooth. If there was a car in the way, it will uh, beep at you like crazy. We'll get some witches hats coming up here, which is always very exciting. <laughs> I always love reversing this car because the reversing camera is so massive, like that massive touchscreen. I just feel like you can see everything and it gives you so much confidence when you're driving a silent car. Got the little steering sign, so we're going to engage. It's got the speed limit wrong, so let's drop it down to 40. And it still seems to be going quite quickly. All right, that's way too quick. Flying through the shops. So I'm just going to engage again. It's interesting, like it's happy to have autopilot going when there's no obvious lines. We've got the car park lines on the left and the right. So it doesn't really know what's happening now. It wants me to put my hands on the steering wheel. And now it's happy to continue. This is quite impressive. All right, I'm just gonna slow down because it wants to pick up to 40 kilometers, which is too quick. I'm amazed that it's happy with the line work in the Sorrento shops here. Look at that, that's crazy. It is a little bit confused. Let's see what it does now. Okay, is it going to go around the roundabout? It goes through the roundabout! <laughs> so this is uh, a lot better than I was expecting it. And this is what I'm noticing with these software updates. Autopilot is continuously getting better and it's making these improvements that you're not necessarily aware of until you start using it again. Like more recently on the way to Beechworth, I've noticed that we're doing like 100 kilometers on a windy road and autopilot is now braking for the corner. That's a totally new thing that never used to happen on the way to Beechworth. So there's these constant updates that just seem to make all, oh, let's see, it's gonna, yeah, so that's good. Oh, it may have, it looked like it was uh, going to maneuver around that car. I should have tried that. Okay, so it's not happy because there's no line work on the left, maybe? Okay, still not getting the steering wheel sign, so it's still not happy to engage autopilot. Let's see at what point on this road is it going to be happy for autopilot to be... Oh, here we go. It's just come on. So I don't know what determines in that instance, there was no difference in or change in the line work. It's reading the speed sign. I'm using the scrolly wheel here on the right to just adjust the speed. Let's see if it gets too close to these cars on the left. Probably a little bit too close for my liking, so better not to risk it. Corrective steering applied. Yeah, I don't know why. Nothing was wrong about that turn. 
it's punishing me now. It doesn't want me to use autopilot because I'm abusing it. So we're at a stop. Let's see if we can engage. All right. See, that's interesting. Like, there's instances where it's happy. Apply. Let's see, it's going to break for this pedestrian. No, it's not. Bless you. You can see when you're coming over a hill like that, the cameras can't see the lines, but it's really good at just constantly checking what's happening. Okay, so it's coming into that corner probably a little bit faster than I would have. And now it's restricting auto steer to 40 kilometers. It's gonna read the speed sign and now automatically it's picking back up to 60. So it is nice when it does that for you. Some very nice houses around here. Heavy braking, probably not as safe as I would have liked. This is like a brand new Peugeot in front of us. It's quite nice. Not electric though. And this regen bar has obviously been updated. So it's a lot clearer as to whether you're consuming quite a bit of battery or quite a lot of regen. Easier to see. Coming into a construction zone. Will it pick up the 40 sign? Yes, it does. So you can see as we're going uphill, it's still happy for autopilot to continue, even though it can't see the lines up ahead. I've even noticed on recent highway drives that if a truck slowly creeps into your lane, autopilot is now like moving within the lane. Okay, I have no idea what it's gonna do here. Wow, it's doing a great job. Like, I feel like I've got full self-driving or something right now. Like, it's doing such a good job and there's so many improvements that have come about since the recent software updates. There is a roundabout up here. Let's see what it does. I might bring the speed right down. What's it gonna do? It freaked out, which is to be expected. Now this is 80, so we can give it just a little bit of juice. I mean, that's just never gonna get old. It's not going to swerve or move for any branches or potholes. So obviously keep that in mind as soon as you see something on the road that the car's not going to recognize, take over because you don't want to damage your wheels or anything like that. I want to see what it does on a road like this where there's no lines. Is it happy for autopilot? No, it's not. Some of these houses are insane. Wow. So there's a roundabout up here. So I'm gonna lower my speed and we'll see if it makes it all the way through. I suspect it won't, but interesting. Bring it down to 30, no oncoming traffic. Okay, so almost made it through. All right, so I hope there was something interesting in there. Every time you're using autopilot, every day, it's gonna do something different. It is a driver assist feature, but it is incredible. So the more you use it, the more confident you get, but you always gotta be ready to take over. Anyway, I'll catch you guys in the next video soon. Thanks so much for watching.